Welcome to Connect E2's uh, podcast where we connect elders with elders in conversation. Join us today for a unique conversation benefiting a unique group of people. Hey everyone, welcome to the E2 Effective Elders podcast. Visit us at e2elders.org and please share this good word with others. Hey, welcome everybody to Connect, uh, elder to elder conversations that are taking place this year to strengthen the elder team within the local church. And our thanks to CDF Capital for their investment in this podcast. All year long, they keep investing in elders across the country and around the world. Hey, today we're going to welcome two individuals who are uh, friends of E2's ministry in a most unique way, Paulette Stamper, uh, as well as Debbie Poor. Paulette's a, a familiar face with E2, and Debbie is on the team of E2, the staff team. Ladies, how are you today? Good. Great. Great. Good to be Doing with you, Gary. Right? Good to be here. I'm glad you're here. And, uh, uh, and not only here in this moment, but uh, in the ministry of E2. Uh, and what we're going to do today, ladies, we're going to help uh, the gentlemen understand this great investment that E2 is making uh, in the lives of some very important people in their lives, uh, and that being their wives. And we're so grateful that the two of you are helping us with that. Uh, uh, all year long... We're taking the six challenges that face elders and using that acronym E-L-D-E-R-S every week, we take one of those challenges, E, evangelism, L, leadership, D, discipleship, E, the equipping of the existing elder team, R, recruiting new elders, and S, the internal structure of the church. And we have a conversation regarding it. And this week, we're going to take that letter E, equipping. And not talking about equipping elders, but equipping the wives of elders for their unique role in the church. Are you ladies able to help us with that, please? I think so. (laughs) Yes, I think that you both have much to say in that regard. Uh, So uh, to to just start the conversation, uh, we want to help elders understand the extreme opportunity, the great opportunity that their wives have in advancing the impact of Jesus, not only in the local church, but outside of the church. And uh, probably at the very core issue uh, of equipping these uh, women would be the interior world uh, of the ladies. Do you two ladies want to just start speaking a little bit into that, please? Go, go ahead, for Paulette. it, Paulette. <laughs> I say, go ahead, Debbie. Um, so many things come to mind, Gary, when you bring that up. Um, and I know that you and I have talked about this before, but for me personally, um, the first thing that would come to mind is just that, that deep relationship with the Holy Spirit, with the Father, mm-hmm. Jesus, it comes through knowing God through his word. Mm -hmm. And um, so many things go through my mind when you start talking about that. And for me personally, I I could talk for a long time about how Mm -hmm. much God has changed my life since I have fallen in love with his word. Um, That's Mm -hmm. how we get to know God. It's how he it's what he's given us to get to know him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the words of Jesus um, ring loud when he said, man will not live on bread alone, but on every word Mm -hmm. that comes from the mouth of God. And it Mm -hmm. reminds me of, um, in particular, one of my favorite stories, the Israelites in the desert and how God provided for them every single day with Mm -hmm. manna. It was there. God promised it. His word is his promise. It was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But they had to actually leave their tent and go get it um, if they wanted to experience it. And Mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the word of God. Like we are so incredibly blessed in this generation, in this nation. Even I've got even just looking on my desk right now, I've got three copies of the word of God Four, (laughs) and, you know, all different versions and and not not counting, you know, what we have um, online that we can get to. We It's an abundance. We've got it. 
Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of are we are we leaving our tents in the morning and going out and getting it because mm-hmm. if we're not we're actually starving ourselves to death. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and it becomes it's not a chore. It's not a oh I have to get up and I have to read my Bible. It's are you kidding? I get to get up and I yeah. get to go meet with the God that spoke the universe into existence. He's given me his word. I remember John Piper once said, um, you know, God didn't give us a brochure. He gave us an entire book, uh-huh. like an entire book to know him, to know his heart, to know how he thinks, to be in that relationship with him. And so it, it's not a chore of I have to, it's I get to. Get to. Mm-hmm. And the more that we, I, you were just talking about this, and I hope that you're going to bring this up. The more time that we spend in the word of God, the more we grow, mm-hmm. the more or we want to be with him. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just increasing, increasing. And I can happily say that I love the Lord Jesus more today than I did yeah. you know, last week or especially a year ago or 10 years ago. And, and if yeah. the Lord lets me live and if time continues, then mm-hmm. I believe with all of my heart, if I stay in the word of God, I make that choice every single day that I'm going to love him even more in mm-hmm. the future. And it's just going to continue to grow. Yeah, so. yeah. I can tell that you're uh, pretty passionate about this. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and, yeah. And what uh, you just referred to is um, a study was completed recently that indicated if a person spends four days, at least four days, in the written Word of God, that person's life will grow exponentially uh, Mm -hmm. like Jesus. Uh, And there are three very unique words in Greek for the word scripture or the word, the word. And Mm -hmm. um, uh, case in point, all scripture is God breathed. Second Timothy 3.16, that's the word graphe in Greek, and it means the written word. So here we have the written word. And then a second Greek word, logos, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Verse 14 of chapter 1 of John became flesh and dwelt among us. That word, Logos, the Word, it means the embodied Word. We get it into us. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, thirdly, when Paul was talking about spiritual war uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, and he said in verse 17, and take with you the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that's the word rhema, which means the spoken word. Yeah. So the, the verse that you used a moment ago, Paul, at, about Jesus, man doesn't live by every word but uh, or bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter four, Luke chapter four. Mm-hmm. That's when he's speaking that as a weapon against the enemy uh, when he's tempted. So when you and I bring, take in with our eyes, the written word, it embodies us. We hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against God. It indwells us. We ingest the bread of life. Uh, and when we then just begin speaking it out loud, casually, extemporaneously in our conversations, that's when we begin to change. It doesn't matter how many worship songs I sing. It doesn't matter how many hours of Christian music I listen to. It doesn't matter how many podcasts I have subscribed to. It doesn't matter how many sermons I write and preach or listen to. It's the word of God that is the game changer. And my and you know what? You said a moment ago, it was very powerful. Um, God reveals himself to us. You know, we can look at a sunrise and go, oh, there must be a God. Or we can look at the expanse of an ocean. Oh, there must be a God. Or a a starlit night. Oh, there must be a God. But word revelation, God reveals himself in his word. This is where we really get to know him. Yes. Um, So, and and Debbie, I know that for you, when, when it comes to the interior world of a woman, that and you've written about this just in the last two weeks in our "Be Encouraged" uh, woman to woman column. That prayer uh, is a pretty important element of an individual's walk with God. You want to talk about that a little sure. bit? Yeah, and I think you know Paulette has a very good point. We have to be in Scripture. That's where we really learn and where we really grow and where we really meet God. Mm-hmm. But we can't read Scripture like any novel. We can't just sit down right. and pick it up and read it like we would read the latest novel. We really have to start with prayer, um, Mm -hmm. I think. We have to sit down and we have to be 
quiet. We have to be mindful. We have to be focused on, even if I read a verse, I have to be focused on what I'm mm -hmm. reading there. And I have to just be open to what mm -hmm. I might be led to hear. And, mm -hmm. you know, in scripture, from the beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, there's mm -hmm. prayer scattered all through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, prayer is conversation with God, listening to him, mm -hmm. being open to him. Um, so I think if we don't have that as a very important basis for mm -hmm. our um, for our faith walk, and we can't go any place, mm -hmm. um, or we're very limited mm -hmm. in where we can mm -hmm. go. Yeah, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Absolutely. Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed, Mark 1, verse 35. Um, and I know for many women, they say, oh, my gosh, I'm so busy. I just can't. Mm -hmm. I just can't add one more thing. I can't spend time mm -hmm. in prayer or it's such a scattered thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. You know, I, I can remember back in the days when I had kids in the house and I worked a full time job and I worked many, many, many hours overtime mm -hmm. in that full time job during a period. But if I didn't get up early in the morning and mm -hmm. start my day in prayer, Mm -hmm. the day just didn't go where it should have mm -hmm. gone. And mm -hmm. I wasn't able to minister to my kids or to my coworkers or to my mm -hmm. clients or anybody mm -hmm. else. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I know, um, you know, you and Jim, uh, your husband, you made a very courageous decision some years ago uh, and you sold your house, a lot of your earthly goods and you Absolutely. moved halfway around the world to the mission field and you worked uh, outside of the United States. And I, and I know that the two of you could only make that kind of a decision uh, because of bathing that decision in prayer and yes. seeking God's will for your lives and then seeking his strength to follow through on Absolutely. that decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of those things, you know, Jim knew right away that mm -hmm. God was laying on his heart that this is what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. I was not quite so, so <laughs> but I agreed to pray about it. Let me uh -huh. at least pray about it. And, and I will honor what God says. Sure. And you know, you can't argue with God. Mm -hmm. Two, two responses I got every time I prayed was, and why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's good. pretty hard to argue that point with God. Yeah. And the second uh -huh. one was remember Jonah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a game changer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Hey, um, all right. So as we launch this ministry to the wives of elders, uh, we know that we want to equip them, particularly in the development of their interior world. That's uh, of great, great uh, importance because the more like Jesus the wife of an elder becomes, the farther her reach, the deeper her impact on the lives around her. Now, in many respects, uh, some of these ladies, they, you know, they might be working in uh, guest services, they might be working in missions, they might be working in benevolence, they might be working in children's ministry, student ministry, any number of areas within the local church could be working with the uh, inner city, uh, whatever. So the point is, uh, John Maxwell, some years ago, defined leadership as influence. Leadership is influence. And what I always want people to understand, you know what? Hey, uh, mom, you're a leader. Why? Because you have influence over those children. Hey, Grandma, you are a leader because you have influence over those grandchildren. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not a leader. But if we just understand that leadership is influence, there's a leadership capacity within everybody. So uh, I, I just want to throw out this question to the two of you. When you think of this ministry now that we're launching to encourage, to equip wives of elders, what word of encouragement would you give to them when it comes to their leadership impact or influence? Debbie, you go first. <laughs> I think I would have to encourage them to know that they are not alone 
in in walking this path. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes they really feel like they are, you know, that they are not connected with one another. Um, because I think many times they have not been encouraged to be connected to one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of happens. Um, but as a group, they're not always connected to one another. And I would just really encourage them um, that they need to find that connection, that they mm -hmm. need to, um, yeah, to just be encouragers to one another. That then allows them to be better leaders in mm -hmm. whatever aspect, wherever they're serving, whether it's in the local church or outside in um, service in the community mm -hmm. um, or even at home. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep, that's a good word. Uh, uh, there's greater power, greater impact, greater strength yes. when we are doing life with one another. And uh, these many wives of elders within the local church, if, if they could connect relationally, right. intentionally doing yes. so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Paulette, word of encouragement? Um, well, I'd just piggyback on what Debbie said. I think... Um, I think sometimes we, um, as women, just need to be reminded that we are in that we are leaders, even if we're not in a leadership role per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And both of you all touched on that, but Debbie, what you said is so important. Just connecting with other women who are in a like um, situation, you know, mm -hmm. like just being married to an elder is a very unique <laughs> position, and. Um, mm -hmm. I think probably more so than what they realize, a lot of other women in the church would look to them for encouragement and for leadership, mm -hmm. for ideas. And so whether they realize it or not, they are in a, just such a, um, it, it's a position of incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, I love, I love what you're doing with this, Gary, just getting together the women who are elders wives to remind them that they're not just an elder's wife mm -hmm. and that they have tremendous impact and that they are going to be stronger when they come together, but mm -hmm. just, to, just to be reminded you are in a leadership mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. and not to be afraid of that role, mm -hmm. but, um, wow, the courage and the strength that comes from, um, meeting with Jesus every mm -hmm. single day and um, humbling ourselves before him, he will, he will give all of us what we need to do, what he has called us mm -hmm. to do, whatever unique position. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a good word. And, and casting that vision for elders, wives is very important. Uh, letting that be known to them. You know, um, uh, you made mention, Paulette, of the title of our book. Here, here's the artwork for the title of a book that seven ladies mm -hmm. have contributed to. So we have women writing to women in our new book, Not Just an Elder's Wife, Living with Passion and Purpose. These books come from our printer, uh, we're told, on Friday, May the 7th. We're pretty excited about that. Nice. And uh, we already have people coming to our website, e2elders.org, to pre-order their book. Uh, it's a pretty significant savings, about 33%. So uh, for only $10, you can pre-order a book. And again, this book emphasizes that when we are doing life with one another, with Jesus, um, uh, with an, uh, a husband, with friends, other women uh, who are in the same role, this affinity group, when we're doing life, even with those who are far from God uh, and they need to be told about this hope in Jesus, this book loaded with discussion questions is a great uh, personal study where uh, uh, an elder's wife can do that on her own, but also a group of elder's wives, just like what you said, Debbie, elder's wives coming together. This can be a great journey. Uh, one of our partner churches, uh, the minister's wife, uh, is going to be doing this uh, as a study with all of the elders' wives. She already uh, contacted me, and she's very excited about that. So in addition to that, you ladies are planning a pretty significant event that's coming up. You want to tell us about that, please? <laughs> Go for it, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. July 23rd, 24th, mark your calendars. And we're going to do our first summer conference. We're really excited about the fact, yep, that there'll be a time of, of in-depth worship and praise 
Um, there'll be some workshops. And of course, there's going to be just some fun along the way, some laughter. And mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about our guest speaker for the for the event. And Paulette, mm -hmm. I'll let you talk about her a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, so my girlfriend, Fanchon Stinger, will be um, one of our main speakers. And so super excited about that. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. really excited. Um, well, tell, tell us a little bit about Fanchon, please. So Fanchon, most people, um, if you're in the Indianapolis area, will recognize her name. Um, she is a news anchor for Fox 59. Um, and she loves Jesus, loves mm -hmm. her. That's what I would say about Fanchon. And she's super fun, too. Uh -huh. So, um, But yeah, that's that's what drew me to Fanchon um, to begin with. That's what... Uh -huh. And our friendship was just our mutual mm -hmm. love of the Lord and his word. So, yeah. And I, I really enjoy the way that Fanchon communicates uh, being a news anchor. Mm -hmm. She is able to uh, exude Jesus. Uh, yes. It's obvious. Now mm -hmm. she's not declaring uh, the gospel in a newscast, but you can see Jesus Christ. Uh, yes. In Fanchon Stinger, there's no 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 doubt about it. Uh -huh. yes. Her faith is widely known uh, throughout yes. Central Indiana. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's very outspoken, very outspoken of her faith, which I love. Super mm -hmm. fun. So we would encourage all of our elders' wives out there. Registration, mm -hmm. I think, is open now. Um, mm -hmm. So you just go to our website, and you'll find the logo for the summer conference. So we'd mm -hmm. love for as many as possible to come and join us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be here at the Creek, Indian Creek Christian Church, where we, E2, have our offices. And uh, this is on the southeast side of Indianapolis. So if you just <laughs> Google Indian Creek Christian Church, you'll see that. But again, go to e2elders.org, and you can register for the conference. It's only $25. And uh, this is on Friday <laughs> evening and uh, Saturday until early afternoon. So there'll be plenty of drive time coming in or returning home. Now, and ladies, would you say that uh, this is exclusively for the wives of elders or could other ladies come? Um, um, I would see it as primarily uh, uh, for the wives close. of elders and other uh -huh. women in leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to be developing some community and it may be that, you know, uh, we have that letter R recruiting the next generation of elders. That's a challenge for elders refilling that pipeline. And I, I would say to you ladies, it's very important for the ladies to refill the pipeline and much like what Titus says, the older women of the church are to speak into the lives of the younger women. So whatever, you can do in that uh, ministry uh, context model uh, to invite a, a, a key, uh, I don't want to use the word understudy, but a mentee mm -hmm. that the ladies who are registering for the conference, please consider who it is that you could invite to bring along to be a part of that uh, fellowship. That would be so very important. So, well, you know, we're a little bit past our 20 minute mark. So gentlemen, listen up. Debbie and Paulette have thrown the gauntlet down and <laughs> they want you to share this podcast with your wives. Uh, they want you to share this good news of ministry to encourage the wives of elders has formally been launched at E2 uh, and we're really dependent upon you, our brothers, to get the word out and to share that uh, with the ladies and do all that you can to invest in their lives so that they can draw alongside of you and advance the, the person of Jesus wherever it is the Lord has called you to, to serve him. Ladies, thank you so very much. We, we appreciate you and uh, you are making an enormous difference uh, for the Lord and particularly in the ministry, the growing ministry of E2. And we thank the Lord for both of you. Have a great day, ladies. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.